I've always had a passion for being around and learning about animals. When I was younger, going to zoos and animal parks was always a part of my life. I wanted to share my passion with family and friends, so I started working with people that loved animals as much as I did, and my YouTube channel was born. Welcome back to my animal education series. Today I'm at SIUE with Sam and Aaron. Hello. So what is this weird technology that we have here? This is radio telemetry equipment. It's used to track down animals. Put the radio transmitters onto the animal. The antenna picks up the signal that gets sent off of that. It goes to the receiver. It gives us a little bit of a beat, close enough or close, and you can find the animal you're looking for. So what kind of animals are we looking for today? So we are specifically tracking eastern box turtles. Which is my favorite of all the box yes, turtles. They're as, adorable. As they might know, I have two of them, and they're amazing. And they're amazing. But what is the purpose and why are you looking for eastern box turtles? So we are trying to determine the eastern box turtles home range and habitat preferences. So with the equipment we can find out how big their home range is, so how far they travel to eat, to mate, to find food, things like that. And then we also take components of the vegetation and soil temperature to determine like what microhabitat preferences they prefer to be in. Well since these turtles are so awesome and we're doing some research today. Let's go try to find some. All right. Good. Strong signal right around here. Uh, you might have found them up here. Uh, just not some loose on top of them. Yep, there they are. All right, we got one. Awesome! We got one. Yay, good job. This is Joe. This is my female. One of my females. Yes. So obviously we found one of the turtles here. So which one is this one? Uh, this is Joe. I named her Joe. This is my first turtle that I found actually um, almost a year ago. It was July 31st of last year. Keeps clawing the crap out of me. That's <laughs> not that comfortable. She's not normally this feisty. Probably because I'm new. <laughs> and I smell because we're all sweaty and everything. But. So how do you like tell us like a box turtle versus other turtles? So it's kind of hard with the color because the coloring can vary but they get their name because they can completely hinge up and close. So if they want when they're hiding, there's no gaps or anything. They just completely close into like a box shape. So that's how they get their name. And then anything else you use to identify? Box, box turtles, turtles versus, things. yeah. Uh, unlike aquatic turtles, they don't have webbed feet. Mm -hmm. uh, not quite tortoise feet, they look like little elephant feet, but they don't <laughs> have uh, webbed toes either. So it's kind of a generic foot with Claws and, and their patterns, but that can be confusing. A good indicator to me, like, some aquatic turtles are like this, but like mm -hmm. the big dome shell rather yep. than like the sleek one. Yep. That's mostly what I, I use. And the, these with the coloration, it's a bit hard, but usually when I see a high dome and color for a while, I think yep. box turtle. Yeah, exactly. So how do you tell a male from a female box turtle? Because you said Joe here was a female. Yes, she is a female. Um, there's a few different ways. So one of the easiest ways is if you look at their eyes. So. Um, Females typically have brownish eyes, as you can see on Joe. Males will have really, really bright red eyes most of the time. So that's the first thing that I look for because it's the easiest, but it's not 100%. You know, you can have males with brown eyes and females with redder eyes. So another thing you can do is if you take the turtle and you look at the plastron, which is the shell on the bottom, and kind of rub your hand over it, the females have a more flat plastron and the males when you find them and feel them you'll really see what I'm talking about if you get a chance but they're really concave so they have like a dip in the middle and that's just to <laughs> that's just to mount the females easier um, during mating and I feel a bit, bit jealous here because she's not calling you at all <laughs> I was getting tore she up. knows me she knows my annoying voice she's like oh it's this girl again um, another thing you can do is look at their back claws so on the males, that um, front claw will typically be really thick and really curved, and on females, it's a little bit more slender and straight. 
So we usually do a, a visual survey to make sure that they're healthy and safe, not injured. Uh, sometimes they'll have chips on the top of them, some kind of injury. So make note of any of those. Um, if they're not this shy, we'll check their head and neck for abscesses or missing toes, that kind of thing. Uh, we also like to weigh them to make sure that they're healthy weights consistently throughout the project. And mm -hmm. I use this little spring scale and a bag, so we put the turtle in the bag. You have to bug them a little bit. Kind of helps when they're shy for this part. So if she was clawing the bag like she was clawing me earlier, it would not be that easy. <laughs> be much more difficult. <laughs> We just press this to the bottom here, and we let her hang down. I need to get a reading right here. She's about 700 grams. So it's accurate to about 20 grams. I'm going to pass her over to Sam here to show you how we measure them. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the head, so don't want to there. <laughs> so we use um, calipers to get their body measurements. And this just kind of unwinds and it's digital so it'll just mark the reading in millimeters of how far it is. So if we wanted to get the carapace length, which is the top shell, we would slide this and take the length. Sorry, it was on negative. <laughs> So you just do it like that, and then if you want to do like the carapace width, you would do it across, and then um, we can turn her over, and we would do the plastron length, so the total length here, and then um, when I do the plastron width, I do it a few times, and I get it wherever it's at its widest. So you might have Probably to... Probably right here. <laughs> yep, it usually is right about there below this ring right here, but I usually do it a few times. We can definitely see like uh, boxing up right here, since they're all mm -hmm. giant upside down which is never comfortable. Yes, yeah, so you can see they're, um, since she's shy right now, this is why they're called the box turtle because they have that hinge right here that allows them to completely close. And if you look, look around, you can tell it like a little bit but mm -hmm. not a whole lot at yeah. all. Yeah, and she can close it tighter if she wants. She's just peeking out a little bit. <laughs> put them right back up. Right. And is that all you uh, do with it? Just kind of the quick basics right there. Yep, the measurements on the body, um, the weight, and then as soon as we would find a turtle, we would um, mark it on the GPS. So get the GPS units on it, write that down so that we know where we found her or him. So we've been out here for about two hours. It's like 95 and the heat index is well into the hundreds. So the turtles were not all that active today. <laughs> and much. we're sweaty messes, especially with our boots and lawn pants in this heat. It's kind of crazy. But we did find one. We did. That's pretty good. And one tracker that yes. fell off of a turtle. <laughs> we did, I don't think we recorded that, unfortunately, but we were there for like 10, 15 minutes just mm -hmm. digging through the same pile of grass. Couldn't find it. It happens. Yep. It's all part of study. Yep. Well, I'd like to thank you so much and also like to thank Aaron uh, for taking us out here and kind of show us your studies and the one turtle that we did find. <laughs> of course. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and also check out my Instagram, at Culture. As always, see you next week.